In the post today, I got the deck of many things. I was surprised too. This thing was supposedly delayed until December. And here we are, mid-November. I'm not going to argue. Let's open it up. And that is the first issue. So this cost me £70. And the first thing I've got to do is pull this which doesn't work very well. I work in printing, you should know that. So perforations and print is my game. I have to destroy this box, it feels like. Oh, look, I mean, literally, literally, I just have destroyed this box. Cheap ass box. Okay, the box looks lovely. It was pointed out to me that it says the deck of many things on the cover of the box and then the book of many things. Just to pull another book off, it's pretty standard size. And along with this, we get this. Oh, okay. That will look nice on my shelf. I guess that's the idea that you don't store it in the slip cover. Well, sorry, calling it a slip cover is incorrect. It's now a ripped box. I guess we should look in the book first. Change my lighting a touch as well. So chapter one is The Fool. Talks about it having 22 chapters, character options, magic spells, items, monsters, ready to play adventures, DM advice. Book of Many Things explores and expands the deck. The first five chapters are for DMs. Next four chapters, character focused. The Celestial Suite. These four chapters are inspired by astrological phenomena. The next five chapters include adventure locations. The final four present new monsters. Okay. There's a little bit of lore here about the deck itself. Preparing to use the deck, while some groups embrace surprising twists others prefer to avoid major campaign upset customizing your deck the starter deck this version is meant for low level characters as low as level one role playing focus self-explanatory light-hearted then deck of horrors which is the full-on terrible outcome version talks about creating additional cards yourself that's interesting balance it's talking the same talk as tarot cards instructions are and oracle cards. Talk about when interpreting the deck, you can lean on the card's imagery, not just the numbers and words. Card sparks, you can use the visual elements as a quick source of inspiration. Here are three methods. Quick non-player characters, idea decks, filler scenes. That could be interesting, I like that idea. Inspiration hand, draw a number of cards equal to the number of players, place the cards face up on the table where everyone can see them. When a player gains inspiration, they must pick a card and later use the effect shown. I don't know. As an action, you are transported to an empty demiplane until the end of your next turn. You can't affect or be affected by anything on the plane you left until you return. You return to the same space you left, if that's occupied, to the nearest unoccupied space. Why, though? Another way to use inspiration is to make it affect monsters and villains. So some ideas of spreads. Encounter deck, non-combat encounter cards. They're all just to represent whatever you want, really. Forest encounter deck, corrupted lands encounter deck. Ooh, puzzle features. Riddles? Riddle is a verbal puzzle, yes. So yeah, you could use the, the symbols as riddles, that's fair enough. Writing riddles, 22 riddles. Don't look at the riddle answers. Let's turn over. Trap rooms. So different types of trap there. Um, gem, magic items in this book. It's a lot of magic items there. Dealing with wealth. Magic items. Crown of whirling comets. Don John's sundering spear. Fool's blade. Jester's mask. Ring of puzzler's wit. What is that? Warrior's passkey. The rogue card embodies betrayal and hidden threats. Rogue destinies. Ambitious assassin. So it's very much leaning into a rogue chapter there. Enchanting infiltrator, otherworldly corrupter, veiled presence, the sage card. So it really does go into a lot of detail about each card and if that's the what the art like, that is lovely. Fates. Backgrounds. Ruined backgrounds for characters whose lives have been upended by an event of great significance. The rewarded background. You left your daily miseries of your old life behind in favour of life of an adventure and excitement. Insight and persuasion as skill proficiencies. Your unexpected good fortune is reflected by a minor boon. You gain lucky, magic initiate or a skill feat of your choice. So yeah, how to play a character who has 
come across this deck. Fated Destinies, each card, let's say, Uriel, is it? You and your family are watched by secretive figures. They usually keep hidden, but you've seen their, you've seen they wear an unknown symbol. Treasures, Deck of Oracles, Supernatural Gifts. So you pick a category, what different categories, what you want these these cards to represent, and then there's chat different items that can represent any card, I guess. The character who draws the knight card gains the service of a loyal warrior. Sword of the Plains, Shield of the Tortoise, Heroes of Destiny, drawing the knight card, Deck Defender. These look rather cool. So you get, yeah, you get an ally that's made of card. That's interesting. Sun card. The Sun card. The Solar Bastion is an elite organization. Its members style themselves as, as knights. Solar Bastion Knight. The Solar Bastion Headquarters. This is just option upon option. And I'm starting to see how you can really use this in any way you like for inspiration, as it says. And on a whim in the game. Adventure Hooks, Omens of Apocalypse, Star Card, Star of Many Things. So this is the Constellations, that's quite cool. Zodiac Phenomena, Observatories and Map as well. Jester, you know what, this is this is pretty damn intricate. I think most, almost every page has something that is useful at some point or another, especially like the maps. From all his ghost. Yeah, I mean, look at that map. Beautiful. Random encounters. Minotaur, Star, Fair Grove. Dragon's Roost. Don John. Void. Drawing the Void card. That's instantly got me interested. The character's soul is teleported there, trapped inside a porcelain mask in the lair of a breath drinker, a monster presented in this chapter. House of cards. Oh, I think this might well be an adventure. Yeah. The breath drinker. Challenge 14. I will probably look into this more deeply in future videos. Grim Champion of Pestil Pestilence, Desolation. You know what? There's just a lot of stuff there. Conclusion. Right, let's have a look at the deck. That's a slipcase. This is a very nice box. And is that magnetic? It's not. That is, you know what? That's actually a lovely little box. I'm actually surprised at how nice that feels. So you've got to lift up three decks of cards. Why is there three decks of cards? These are paper, so aren't gonna last two damn minutes. That's nice. That's nice, and this actually opens sideways. Card reference guide. Customizing your deck. Card meanings. Card spreads. Just like tarot cards. Adventure spreads. Lay out the cards in this order. Order. Party gathers. Adventure begins. Journey. Entrance. Challenges. Treasure. Guardian. Goes through an example. Variant dungeon spread. Fortune tellers. Aberration. So yeah, just, just like a tarot deck does, its position, whether it's upside down, whether it's across a card, all has meaning. So every one of these, all bright meaning, reverse meaning, as I say. I mean, these are lovely pictures, so I look forward to looking at the card. Let's let's just take a reading of one card. All bright meaning. Person. So the card could mean a dragonborn, a person who uses draconic magic, a person who is fascinated by dragons, or a person who hoards wealth or other, other goods. Creature or trap. A dragon or similar creature. Place the lair of a dragon or some other impressive creature or a site of great magical power. Treasure, large quantities of treasure, which would be, you know, evident by the dragon coming up. Situation, someone hoarding resources that are widely needed or desired. I understand, and I don't think that's just because I do own tarot cards. So this is, in, in its entirety, each card but let's just open one of these. So these are actually gold, gold edged also. Of course you'd you'd shuffle these up, but you know, decent size, tarot card size again. I really like those. I think dishing those out on the table would be a really good a really good thing. So I think there's more to dig into with this. 
video wise for me. I need to have a good old look in there. I'm I'm impressed with the the final final thing. It's it's a it's a novelty, I must admit. But I think that is one of the most useful books I've seen in quite a long time. Yes, a, a deeper dive is needed into that, but I think it beats Planescape in immediate usability for me personally. We all have different needs, don't we? But if, if I just wrote, open that on a random page. The characters encounter another traveller or a friendly local resident who offers them food, shelter, inf information, or other assistance. That card makes them gain advantage on an attack roll. It's literally a book of many different bits and pieces. The card box set is, is lovely, so decorative, but the more you use it, perhaps the more it becomes redundant. But then again, you say that for any book, can't you? Is it worth the 80 English pounds? I still think that's a bit much. I would have been happy at 60 quid. I mean, I think I paid about 60 for this with a DM screen and everything. So a lovely packaging, you know, looks nice on the eye, but I think it's I think it's a high price at 70 quid. And today, because it's been delayed for most people, people are charging like 125 quid up in some stores. Don't, don't. It will be useful. It's a lovely Christmas gift, but I will be exploring some interesting things about it on this channel. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you later.